All right, John chapter number 12. Stand with me, please, in verse number 1. It's where we're going to start reading tonight. John chapter 12, verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, where they made him a supper. And Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this sold ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Then he, uh, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bare what was put therein. Then said, Jesus, let her alone against the day of my bearing, as she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Father, we love you and thank you for this day. Bless the message now in your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to preach a couple minutes tonight about Lazarus. You know, there's a lot that we can compare ourselves with him uh, about. You know, Lazarus was dead, and then Jesus came by and uh, gave him new life, amen. And if Jesus hadn't come by, Lazarus would have still been dead. Nothing would have changed. Uh, There would have been a continual, that funeral, the mourning of his family would have continued. Nothing would have been different. It would have continued just as normal death comes to every man. But because Jesus passed by, Lazarus was given life again. And everything changed from then on for him and Martha and Mary. And it's the same for us. Folks, we were dead. (laughs) <laughs> in trespasses and sins. We had no hope. We were without God in this world. And then Jesus came by, and those that have accepted him as their Savior, he's given us a new life. Uh, we have been quickened, the Bible says, with him, and we're already seated together with him in heavenly places. And so as I read John chapter number 12, I almost kind of feel like Lazarus a little bit because he was dead, and Jesus came by him and gave him new life. And so just for the next couple minutes, I want to uh, uh, kind of compare our lives to Lazarus's post-resurrection. Post-resurrection. I want to, first of all, let's find exactly where Lazarus is at. Look with me in verse number 1. Notice that Jesus came there to where Lazarus, to Bethany, where Lazarus and his sisters lived. The Bible says they made him a supper, and look where Lazarus is. Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. After Lazarus' resurrection, after Jesus came by and did something for him, here's where you're going to find him, at the table with Jesus. Lazarus made sure that after his resurrection, when he had opportunity, when Jesus was in town, he was sitting at the table with Christ. We got a lot of Christians, uh, we're going to call them Christians, but we got saved people that Jesus apparently has come by, apparently has given them a new life, apparently has changed things for them, apparently is living inside of them, and some they take every opportunity they can to skip out on sitting at the table with Jesus when he's around, amen. Folks, it just, I don't understand that. Why would somebody that's been born again, that Jesus has changed their life, that God's came by and done something nobody else could do, why in the world would they try to look for an excuse not to pull up a chair when Jesus is around? Amen. So I'm looking at Lazarus after his resurrection. When Jesus sat down at the table, Lazarus was right there with him. Folks, I want to encourage you today. If you're, no, if you're here and you know you're saved, I want you to encourage you to keep being one of them, the Bible says, that sat at the table. I want you to notice there was more than Lazarus there. Lazarus was there fellowshipping with the Lord, but there was more than him sitting there. And I was thinking about folks sitting around a table at uh, dinner time or lunch time or breakfast time or just sitting around over a cup of coffee you don't always have to be the guy talking sometimes just sitting there and enjoying the fellowship and listening to other folks is, uh, does something for you and nourishes you and encourages you and strengthens you and I feel the same way sometimes when we come to church sometimes it gets packed and it's hard to find a place to squeeze in and I'm a little familiar with that especially if you've ever been to Thanksgiving Day over at Alexander's house son it's hard to find a place to squeeze in at the table but if you can find a chair and squeeze in somewhere you ain't got to be the guy talking You ain't got to be the person with the funny stories just sitting there listening and being a part of the fellowship of God's people. We'll do something for you. And if you're here today living a resurrected life, bless God, that's where we should find you. Amen. 
scooting in at the table, sitting with Jesus and being one of them. Amen. Lazarus didn't start pontificating. Lazarus didn't have three points in a poem. He was just sitting there enjoying the presence of Jesus. Somebody that's been born again, that's where they want to be. Somebody that's living a resurrected life in Christ, they want to spend time with Jesus. You don't have to pound their heads about reading their Bibles. You don't have to remind them, have you spent time in prayer today? Son, that's where they'll be if they're living a resurrected life in Christ. They may not be saying much, but they're spending time with Jesus. They're spending time as one of them sitting by the table. They're with God's people. They're with other people that are sitting around the table with Jesus. Please don't forsake that church. Please remember how important that is, the fellowship of God's people and pulling up a chair at the table with Jesus. Even in verse 3 uh, through 7, uh, 3 through 7, Lazarus is sitting there and he didn't jump in on the worship team. Mary, son, she got in the glory. It got, uh, it got over the banks with Mary. Mary pulled out the ointment and the, and the spike nerd and was worshiping Jesus and pouring it on his feet. And Lazarus, man, he was just sitting back enjoying it. I think of services like tonight. Maybe God's working over here and over there and doing something over here and over here. And maybe, maybe God's necessarily not doing something, move, stirring much in your heart. But it's a blessing just to sit at the table and watch God's children break open that spike nerd and find their way to the feet of Christ and start worshiping him, amen. Just pull up a chair at the table and enjoy the good things of God and the fellowship and the worship of Christ. He was able to enjoy that. A, good, a Christian, someone living a resurrected life should always find their place at the table with Christ and communion with Him, whether it be in attending uh, God's, being uh, one with God's people when they get together or even in their own personal devotion, spending time with the Lord. That's living. And are you today? Say, Pastor, uh, brother, I know I'm saved. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I'm going to heaven. Why are you spending time with Jesus at his table? Are you talking to him in prayer? Are you letting him do a work in your heart? This is about missions today. And if we're not spending time with Christ, it's hard for people to see Christ in us and for hard, uh, hard for us to be a blessing to others. Secondly, I want you to look at this. And we're moving quick tonight. I want you to look in verse number 9. The Bible says, Much people of the Jews therefore knew he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that that might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Lazarus became a powerful testimony. There was something visibly different about him. He was smelling. He was dead. He was inanimate. He was laying there, rotting flesh, when they wrapped him up and stuck him in a tomb. And now he's got the glow of life about him. He's eating. He's talking. He's enjoying a walk with Christ. There's something different about him. And he drew people in because of his testimony and because of the change that was in him post resurrection folks I want if we're living a resurrected life if we're living the life that God wants us to live in him there'll be something about us and brothers and folks will just want to come and see us because they know who we were they know how dead we were they know that we just stank and we just deserve to be wrapped up and thrown away somewhere and then after Jesus came son it's something to see it's a difference that you can behold son everybody's coming saying what happened to Lazarus I'll tell you what happened to him. Jesus came by, amen. Living a resurrected life. People want to come and see. Look in verse number 11. Because that reason of him, that's Lazarus. Many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. If you're living a resurrected life, you're going to find a place at the table. And secondly, your testimony is going to draw people, not to you, but to Jesus. Because the reason of him, people believed on Jesus. And then thirdly, I want you to notice this. And I want, you, and I want to encourage you by letting you know this is going to happen. Verse number 10. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. If you're living a resurrected life, the chief priests and the Pharisees and the religious crowd and the people that hate Jesus, you become a target for them. And all they that live in godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It is coming. It's going to happen. You better go ahead and prepare for it right now. 
If you're not living the resurrected life, if you're not full of, the, full of the Holy Spirit and full of God and walking in Him and walking in the Spirit, then you're not going to be spending time with Christ at the table. You're not going to be a witness and a testimony and somebody that will automatically, people want to see the difference and the change in you and be drawn to Jesus Christ. And you will not be a target for the Pharisees. But if you're a Lazarus and you let the life of Jesus Christ shine through you, they're going to find you at the table with Jesus. Your testimony is going to be very powerful. And people are going to see that and come to Christ and want more of him and more of what and more of the person living inside of you. And then thirdly, the chief priests and the Pharisees are going to try to put your light out every which way they can. Satan's going to plan anything and everything and use anybody and everybody to try to take your light and hide it under a bushel and get rid of it. Brothers and sisters, beware, beware, beware. As Satan is passing by and as he's looking about seeking whom he may devour, he's looking to come and to come and hurt you and hurt your family and hurt your marriage and hurt your home and hurt this church and somehow turn that light off that will, uh, that will stop leading people to Jesus. Beware of that and be careful of that. Let's live a les- resurrected life today in Christ. We're going to spend time with him at his table. We're going to be a living witness of what he did for me and what he can do for others. And we're going to prepare ourselves and be ready because the enemy's out there and they're coming after our light. Let's keep shining for Jesus. Amen.